Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. I can hear me, Eunice. Hi, Eunice, can you hear me? Hi, Yunus, can you hear me? You might need to enable your microphone, uh, if not the video, uh, simply because for induction, it is an interactive session, so you would need uh, to have your mic switched on. Okay, all right. All right, okay, that's great. I can hear okay. you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you well. Okay, that's great. No worries. Let me start. Let me share my screen. So we're going to start off with a couple of things. This session, just to give you some housekeeping tips, you know, this session is being recorded. So obviously, you'll get a copy of this recording after the session for you to go, go through or revisit some of the things. Um, because I think sometimes it tends to be a bit of a loaded session with lots of information. Um, but I think I'd like to make it as detailed as possible. Uh, so that it gives you a very good start in terms of, uh, you know, having a confidence in terms of how the course will be run, how you're expected to study, where do you submit your assessments, who and how, when do you get feedback from, and obviously, uh, you know, the team that is behind, which will be giving you the support, uh, you know, essentially to be able to study the course. Okay. Now... Uh, just to look at, there was a bit of a voice mm -hmm. echo which is coming on your end. Are you on two devices or are you on a, what are you using to join the induction? Um, it's it's okay. from the background, noise from background, but it's okay now. All right, okay, that's fine. So okay. the reason I say this is because of the fact that um, um, if you have a bit of a voice echo, uh, then I would suggest that at times you can mute your microphone um, so that the recording is clear and when you get it, you know, you are able to go through it uh, in a better way. Uh, no worries. Uh, right. Um, so we are going to look at a couple of things in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, you know, we are going to look at a bit of course overview. I'm going to share with you in terms of, uh, uh, you know, a bit of the platform, which is the Moodle platform that we have. Um, show you a bit of a quick demo on it. Then I'm going to talk about what, what is the assessment and feedback process. And then uh, briefly introduce, you know, key members or staff in the team so that you know okay. exactly who to get in touch with as and when if you have any requirements. And then last but not the least, uh, ask me as many, you know, queries or questions. Stop me if you feel that there are things that you don't understand or if you need more information on, then the idea would be okay. to try and have that discussion uh, by asking questions. Now, okay. Before we start the induction, um, I would briefly ask you to switch on your webcam because this is a requirement for us as you're going to do the course with us for distance learning. And then at a later stage, you can switch it off because it is to get a, a, a photographic uh, you know, record of somebody who's doing the course with us um, as this is distance learning. So just maybe briefly for a minute or so, if you have your camera switched on, that'll be great. And then you can switch it off simply because I'm also going to do that because of the fact that when we look at sending you the file, the file itself, great, good to see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, good to see you. The reason I say yeah. this, I'm also going to switch it off at some stage because when you um, you know, get the file uh, for recording, the recording okay. file is going to be huge uh, if we have the video switched on. But okay. um, more or less, um, 
that is fine and i have been able to see you thank you so much for that oh okay okay so, any other bits that you want uh, to want us to discuss in the course induction i can put that on the agenda now if there is anything that you think you would want to discuss or maybe ask me later that i can put it on here all right then later all right okay that's great right. so what i'll do is i will switch you over between a few screens from time to time uh, the okay. idea is to make sure that you are able to see everything clearly i oh, okay. if i just show my screen i have quite a big uh, monitor when i say quite a big i have the largest monitor available it's 49 inches as you can see oh, okay all right yeah uh, so yeah. when i switch and switch you to this big view what will happen is your screen will become quite small Small, so yeah. depending on um, you know what we are actually discussing and what i'm showing i will try and then show you that particular part of the screen so that that's the only window that you are able to see very clearly right. so okay. let's start off with our website um so um the website essentially if you know the website this will be able to give you access to pretty much everything that you need at any given point in time so the website mm -hmm. is a great starting point what you can do is on the website click on this lock icon and drag it to your favorites bar and that would mean that at a click of a button you'd be able to get to the website uh, for the time and duration that you're studying the course with us okay. now on the website itself you'll be able to find useful links which are required for, for you to go to any other platform that we uh, would provide data from or you know teaching and learning material from so one of the things is if you have a question a quick question you can actually you know uh, click on this and it will open your emails client on your side and that will allow mm -hmm. you to email you can whatsapp us on these numbers 24/7 okay and somebody can get back to you this is the admissions email address and at times if you need to look at um very briefly say for example going to your platform the moodle platform then that is mm -hmm. also available by a click of a button here so if i click this it will take you to the platform which you are going to use most often uh, in terms of your uh, learning process for the course now along yeah. with that we also expect you to have subscription to our youtube channel it is a free subscription so when you click on the youtube what it will do is open the youtube channel now this is the channel where we essentially look at uh, discussing and putting all the video lectures simply because okay. it's in the open domain it is easy for you to find yeah. and what you would do is basically click the subscribe button here and when you are mm -hmm. subscribed to this particular channel what will then happen at any given point in time would be that you if you require a recording of a particular lecture that would be available to you at a click of a button so there are lots of playlists in the playlist if you go and find the health and social care playlist that will have all the lectures for all the units that you're going to study with us is okay. that okay so healthcare yeah. management if i click on this playlist here just to show you an example this would have your online business so this has 258 lectures across all your units now these okay. lectures is what we refresh every 12 weeks because we are teaching the courses at least five or six times a year so you're not mm -hmm. listening into a lecture which is uh, you know quite old you're going to be mm -hmm. listening into something which is quite recent and all these lectures are named and uh, you know labeled nicely so that you are able to actually see them uh, vis a vis the units that you are looking at doing now some of these are in the open domain you are able to see anybody else is able to see but if you want to look at the most up to date lectures on the unit you click on the live option and in the live option what will happen is you'll be able to see these are all the live lectures that we have started this year or from september last year so this okay. is the most up to date content for example in your case you're looking at studying uh, say level 4 with us and that is yeah. on eight different units so you'll be able to identify if you see working in health and social care sector which is one of the units and each of these units have been taught by breaking them down into learning outcomes which we i'll explain so at this stage two things which i want to mention one website a great starting point bookmark it from the website you can reach us on whatsapp phone email you can go to the moodle platform and what i would suggest is for the duration that you are studying the course if you subscribe to the youtube channel it will be good because when we put out a new video related to your course you will mm -hmm. get an alert and that will allow you to watch that video um, if you missed out any particular lecture okay. now this is the first part in terms of platforms 
Now, the second bit which I want to show is related to how do you access Moodle. So, have you received the logins from my colleague Victor? Yes, uh, yes, yes, please. And do you see your course on your side? Yes, please. Okay, that's great. So, in the home page of the Moodle, it shows also where in which building we are. We are in Universal Square, and we are on the top floor, the fourth floor in the green zone. And when okay. you, if you do decide to come in and see us. Uh, it's easy to find us uh, simply because Universal Square is a very well-known office building. And okay. it is uh, on the fourth floor that we are. And we are number two and three. And you should be able to locate us very easily. Now, okay. also on the home page, if sometimes, uh, if it happens that you forget your password for the Moodle platform, you can reset your password from here itself. And there is a small video which is showing on the, uh, you know, on the home page without logging in. And if you want to set up Moodle, on your smartphone or your tablet so that wherever you are going and if you're traveling you want to carry the course content with you then in this case the Moodle application which is this M kind of an app free application mm -hmm. can be downloaded on Google Android or iOS mm -hmm. uh, iPhone and once you download it can help you set up the whole course uh, that you're going to access on your phone or tablet itself. And wherever you go and you have access to the internet, it will allow you to access the full course material, uh, you know, um, via your phone or your mobile device as well. Now, okay. for you to basically look at installing it, it needs three things. First is it needs the URL, which is the place where the website address is essentially. So that address is lms.ukversity.co.uk. You download the app and then you put in your username, and your password apart from the address. And once it detects that it is UKversary, then it will allow you to save the login and you would not need to log in again until unless you log out on your phone or elsewhere. Now, okay. this is a small screen space because obviously it's mobile. Uh, but the idea there is that if you need to have access to your course, you should be able to do it without any compromise. And when you see material on a smaller screen, you will see okay. everything. But it will just be small and scaled to the screen size that you're actually observing it on. But there is no yeah. compromise in terms of you not being able to access anything. You will have books, lectures, presentation, handouts, case studies, links to websites. Everything will be available. Now, okay. the advantage for us is it is not mandatory that you need to download and install this. But the advantage for us as a college is there are notifications that we can push to your phone because it is on your phone. So just like you get a text message, you get a reminder, we can actually push messages to your phone to say, this is the date of submission of the assignment, or this is the date of the lecture. If you want to look at your schedule, all those things would be available, you know, primarily from uh, the Moodle section. So this is optional, but essentially you can, if you choose to install, you can install it. It's absolutely free and allows you to get the full access to the course material. Now, on the platform, very briefly, when you log in, put your first name on the top and your password that you've kept, and then click the green button. It should log you into the platform. And when you are logged into the platform, what at some stage will happen is when you are in the platform, <clears throat> you will see number of tiles. Now, because I've logged in as the administrator today to show you everything on the platform that you're going to get access to, but on your side, you would just see one course tile it will not show you a lot of tiles. You would just see one course, the course that you're actually doing. So it could be ATHE level three, level four, extended mm. diploma in management for health and social care. That is the course style that you should see when you are logged in on the home page mm. of Moodle uh, for, uh, when you put your username and password. Now, in order to access the course, you click this particular tile and what it will do is it will take you into the course. And when mm. you're inside the course, the course material is organized in different sections. So here, mm -hmm. what, what we are going to discuss today <laughs> in our induction is going to be this particular section, uh, which basically covers uh, you know, the introduction part. Okay. So this, some part of these documentations I will take you through today in the induction. Now, mm -hmm. after this, if I scroll down, what you're going to see is there are lots of headings. Yeah each of the units. Now, they are not headings. If you hover your mouse on top, you would see that it changes color. And what it will do yeah. is you click on it, it will take you inside the course content for that unit. Yeah. So when you are in the course content, there is a certain layout mm -hmm. that we have organized the material in. So 
this kind of a layout will follow through in all the sections of the unit. So the first part uh, that you see is called the unit specification. This is what the unit is, what you have to study, what is the indicative content in the unit that we have to cover in the presentations is actually going to be given here. This is used by us as lecturers to be able to you know, teach and deliver the course. Now, when you see the Moodle platform, you're going to see that there are different types of documents which are arranged on the platform. So what you're going to see is PDF documents. There are some web uh, video documents. There are going to be Microsoft Office documents. Now, when I go to the second document, you're going to see what is called the assignment brief of that unit. Now, this assignment brief has to be attempted by all the learners studying this course. So this is a second document. After that, you're going to see what is called uh, the list of sessions or suggested reading. So here, what we've done is there are books available which are specific for each of the units and they would be available to you as you start the course. And whatever material you access, as you can see here, if I just enroll in, you know, magnify this slightly, it will start tracking your progress on the course that you've started to access this material and it is shows progress. Now, how do I track progress of this on your course, on your site? When you click on the logo here on the home button, you're going to see that the course will show twice in the middle, which is recently accessed, and then the course overview, which is where the course is. And it will show you a progress bar here that how much of the course is complete that you're reading. So this is a subtle way of you knowing that I have so much percentage of my course, which has been completed. Now, if I go back in again, what I'm looking at is um, in the unit itself, you know, there will be what are called presentations for each of the learning outcome. So if I click on this particular unit specification, you're going to see there are four learning outcomes in this unit. Learning outcome yeah. one, two, three, and four. Now, in order to cover this unit, we'll have five lectures. Because first learning outcome will cover the first lecture. There's a presentation, lecture recording, and the presentations are quite detailed. So we will cover them on the assessment criteria. It is going to be slightly directive in terms of teaching and learning because what I don't want to do is do university style lectures, but at the end of the day, these lectures will also cover some of the assessment criteria, which are going to be useful for you to later do your assignments. So they're all going to be neatly labeled. This is covering 1.1 in detail. Then we go to 1.2, 1.3 and so on and so forth. So for each lecture, we will have also a recording. And that recording is the lecture recording along with the uh, contents of the uh, learning outcome. Uh, on the level for healthcare course with the health and social care in course. So if you see that it will explain, uh, you know, the course and the lecture is going to be taking you through the course content which has been created for this particular learning outcome. Now, most lectures tend to be between, I would say, 25 to 35 to 45 minutes. Some of them are long per hour as well, depending on the content that we are covering. What we want to do is we want to ensure that everything which is given in the indicative content, like for learning outcome one, we need to cover all this. So we would have covered all of this in the PowerPoint presentation and also in the, uh, in the discussion of the lecture. And that would mean that you are getting comprehensive coverage on the course content. Now, this will follow through. And then towards the end, once we've completed the learning outcomes, what we also then do is discuss on the assignment. And there is an assignment discussion session as well. So the lecture is going to explain how you would go about doing the assignment. And that would be covered in a discussion on the assignment uh, brief. And that then would tell you yeah, what are the things you need to look at? What are the things you need to be so doing? careful about and how you would go about doing your assignment. So that is also going to be covered in the uh, sessions. Now, this is how you would find all the course content organized across all the units. So if I look at the first one, unit specification, learning outcome one, handouts. Now, in some cases, you would find under the learning outcomes, we also have what are called handouts. And these handouts are put in place because sometimes we cannot cover all the detailing of it in the presentation. So what we're going to do is provide you some additional reading material. And that reading material is going to be specific to a particular assessment criteria. 
So if you see here, we are talking about legislation which is relevant for health and social care. And what we've done is we've done an additional presentation to cover the legislation so that you are clear about what are the clear, uh, you know, you're clear about and have knowledge about what are the main uh, laws that you need to follow through when you're working within the health and social care sector. Things like reporting concerns, risk management, looking at data protection, looking at a uh, person-centered approach, they will all be covered in additional handouts or presentations because they are required for you to understand the topics, the key concepts, and the frameworks in detail. Like one of the things in this unit is about team working. So we need to explain what is team working. And in those cases, what we've done is we've created handouts like the Tuckman's model, Dr. Belbin's model, and they have been provided to you as word handouts so that along with what we've discussed in the presentation, you're also able to read in a bit more detail about these frameworks. So if I just download one document and show you separately, uh, you know, on a different screen, you would see that this particular document, which is on the team working roles, is essentially going to be talking about, uh, you know, Dr. Belbin's model. And that would essentially give you the detailing about this particular model that you need to know and you need to be studying, uh, you know, to understand team working. And this handout is going to be separate to the presentation and the coverage that we have done because you need to get detailings of this. And this is an important framework for the study of this particular unit. So in some learning outcomes, you would generally see that there are going to be what are called additional handouts. Is that okay? Yeah. And this layout will follow through just like a textbook style. And if you want to go back to see the whole course, you click on this uh, menu on the top here, and it will take you back to the, the beginning of the course or where all the units are organized. Now, sometimes you're going to see some units are hidden. There are two reasons. And uh, I'll be honest here. There are two reasons why. One is that for learners who are doing the course on payment or installment basis, finance only opens at any given point in time two units because you're paying the make, making the payments and obviously uh, you know the the course is being drip fed to you uh, from the learning platform the second reason which tends to be in most cases is that sometimes the course material is being updated by the it administrator or the presentations are undergoing refresh and that is where you will find some of the units to be hidden there is also an additional reason which i will share with you is that sometimes learners pick different units to study so what happens in this case is if I go into uh, the course overview slightly later, what you're going to see is in the course handbook, there are four mandatory units in this qualification, mm -hmm. and there are four optional units that you have to cover. So if I you're doing the extended diploma, which is 120 credits, that's the off-call qualification number. Mm -hmm. And if I scroll down into this particular handbook, course handbook, this is where you're going to see that these units are mandatory, which everybody has to do, the three units. Health and social care, communication, and people management. Now, along with that, you have to choose from the optional units. So here, sometimes we have learners which will choose different units to study. And that is why you would see that some units are hidden and some units are available. Because depending on which unit you have chosen, that will be visible to you on your side and others will be hidden. Is that okay? Okay. Any questions so far? No. All right. So this basically tells you about the platform. What you see is what you're getting. It is simple click and play. Documents which are PDF will open on the platform. Documents which are provided as Word or Microsoft documents, we want you to download them because you're going to be using some of them for your assignment, for creating evidence, and we don't want you to reinvent the wheel. So we have provided them as templates, plus also for additional reading. And that is something that you can download. If you see any web documents, which are going to be lecture recordings, they would normally open up uh, on the cloud or on the YouTube. So when you click on this, for example, any of these recordings, which shows that there is an internet access uh, required, you would generally see that these recordings would be the lecture recordings and they will open up in the cloud. Is that okay? Okay. Now that is how the course layout is on the learner management system as far as uh, you know, the Moodle access is concerned. Now, what so what I've done so far is I've looked at you know certain platforms that you are going to be using, 
and they would essentially be the uh, platforms which are going to be useful for you to access the course material. Now, if I just rearrange uh, and show you the screen. So going back here. So, so far what we've done is we've covered the access to the platforms. So I've, you know, covered this bit here. I'll put it uh, here and the website and how to reach us, whether it's through WhatsApp, email, and phone. Mm -hmm. So phone number, this is the college switchboard. We have 24 lines on this. So if you need to ever call mm -hmm. us, you know, it'll be available 24 seven, uh, but obviously during working hours, Monday to Friday. But if you're looking at uh, something quite urgent, you can WhatsApp us. And, you know, this bit would be generally, uh, you know, responded to pretty much immediately because we don't want you to get stuck when you're learning. If you have an urgent requirement or you need something urgently, what you can do is uh, essentially WhatsApp us. And what that would mean is that you will be able to get pretty much a response, uh, you know, pretty much immediately from one of the members of staff. So I would suggest that this would be the way that you can get in touch. And this gives you a bit of an idea on the platforms that you're going to be accessing, uh, you know, for the duration of your study of the course. Now let's quickly go to the course overview. So I'll switch over and we'll go to some of the detailed documents which are given on the course uh, access. So what we've done here is, is this is the course handbook that you are seeing, uh, which is uploaded here. And this course handbook has lots of details in it that you can actually refer to with regards to understanding what is your award, who's your awarding organization what is going to be covered in the course that you are studying with us. And if you want to see detailing in terms of progression, in terms of things which are related to how you are, when you complete the course, where and what all does it give you in terms of going forward, those bits would be available in the course handbook. So let me open that up. So this is a, a awarding organization, which is going to give you the award awards for training in higher education. And if I just briefly open their website. So this is the awarding organization, athe.co.uk. That is the website address. All their qualifications are on UCAS. And if you ever need to reach them, then you can obviously do them through the phone, through the website. And obviously this is where, uh, you know, the it's a very well known awarding organization, uh, which has been set up in 2009, they were a part of NCFE earlier. So they broke away from NCFE, which is the oldest awarding body in, in the UK, 175 years old. And they went into higher education. NCFE has most programs towards, uh, you know, NVQ level one, two, three. Now in the qualifications, so some parts of it are, you know, that is what you get to see in the course handbook. You can read about what is ATHE, what qualifications they have, and obviously lots of bits related to the unit the different forms of assessment, entry requirements, and progression routes have been given here in some of the few pages. Now you're doing the full extended diploma, which is 120 credits. Uh, you can progress to level five after this, or you can go to the second year of university. If you want to do it through distance learning or otherwise go into a classroom-based study route, they will accept your level four diploma and give you admission into the second year. Um, you can study level five with us after completing level four and then go to the university to do your top up later for the final year of your degree, which is going to be bachelor's in health and social care management. Now, if I look at this particular chart, uh, which is on page 10, is a good summary of what all units you are going to cover when you study this qualification with us. Now, we generally teach these units. So I've, I've got a version of it, which I'm going to share right now. And that is going to be the bit here. This is an extracted document from uh, the course handbook. And I've just highlighted the units in green that we normally have learners actually going through. So you can pick and choose some of the units that you feel you, know, you would want to study. And accordingly, they would be then visible on your side uh, you know, with regards to the uh, Moodle, uh, you know, access. Now, as I mentioned, there are three mandatory units. We can't change them. And in the level four, mostly the learners would pick out the level four units uh, because 
if some of them decide to do level five later, they would have level five units and your first year or level four has only the level four units. So these three, apart from these uh, four, and last but not the least, which is this particular unit, is what most learners actually end up doing. And it's a good combination mm -hmm. of you picking up knowledge on health and social care in particular. So empowering users, health and safety, management of health and social care provision, what is equality and diversity, <laughs> and then how do you plan or work in a team within health and social care, which is the most important unit because mm -hmm. NHS and health and social care is all about team working. There's no individual work, individual work that you do. It's all related to working within Steam. And then these are the three mandatory. They will oh, all add up to 120 credits. Okay. Is that okay? All so right. this particular document that you see, I'm going to email you this document after the session so that you also okay. have it for your record. You can print it out at your end if you want to, and maybe you know pin it up on your wall or you know in your room. So you know this unit I'm studied, this unit I've studied, you can tick mark and it gives you a bit of a summary of what all units you're going to be studying. All right. Now, um, yeah, go on. Please, can you add more courses to it? The, man, the units, can you add more to it? Or it's only the mandatory and but we are going to three start other you, units? We are going to start you off with the mandatory units first so All that right. you're able to complete these. These are important because they are required, as I say, for you to achieve the diploma. Okay. Yeah. Once these are done, then the other units will be open to you, depending on which ones you are choosing. Uh, okay. Most of right. go by the units which I've shown you because of the fact that uh, we know which units universities are accepting towards progression for second year, or if you continue with us and then do a later top up later, then we know which units they want to see in level four and which units they want to see in level five. And we okay. have had over 1200 learners which have done this qualification with us in the last eight years. So all of them have gone to Salford, Bolton, Metropolitan, Chester University, and because these units match with the units which universities have in first year, that is why we have chosen these so that it allows for easy progression. Okay. All right. I am not saying that these are the only ones you have to do. You make a choice which you want to do. We have taught all the units. Everything is available. Uh, but the concern sometimes tends to be from the learners is that, okay, I've done this and my uni is not accepting it because I'm going into the second year. The reason they do not accept is that you have covered some level five units at level four, which they'd see as an anomaly. And the other is they have you have covered some units which they feel are irrelevant to the health and social care course, like employability skills, personal and okay. professional development. You might not want to do this because they are not, uh, they are generic units. Okay. But if I do something like management of activity provision, or working within multidisciplinary teams, contemporary issues, health and safety, equality, they are related to the topics of health and social care. And that is why we have chosen these units for you to study at level four and then at level five so that they are relevant to health and social care sector. Okay. Now, okay. there is also a fallback in the qualification, assuming sometimes it happens because of certain circumstances if you are not able to complete. So in this qualification from ATHE, there is also a diploma, which is four units, 60 credits. And that is what you can actually complete, assuming if, um, you know, we don't have this, but just briefly explaining, for example, you started the course, but, you know, because of, uh, say, a circumstance, you were not able to complete. Then what we will do is, depending on how many units you are able to complete with us, we are going to provide you unit certification. And that could be for a smaller qualification. Not that I'm saying you have to, but sometimes learners complete four units and they do diploma in healthcare management. Sometimes they complete one unit or two unit, which is award or certificate. And if you do the full eight units, then that is extended diploma. So this is structure for extended diploma, which you are studying. There's also a diploma, which is 60 credits qualification. And then there is a smaller version of the qualification, which sometimes people do because they've been asked by the employer to study this particular unit or a particular, uh, you know, uh, get a particular unit certification and that tends to be a certificate which is like two units that you study and that will give you a certificate. Okay. Now there are no exams in this qualification. Everything is going to be assessment on the basis of assignments and everything uh, will be black scanned or checked for plagiarism similarity. College policy allows up to 20% of your work to be copied or can be similar so you have to keep in mind that when you write material, when you create assignment, 
the idea would be to use original work or paraphrase it, write it in your own words so that there is no similarity. Now, there are some guidance which are given, which is good for you to read, things like guidance on how the assessment will happen. Now, most assignments that you do are going to be a combination of two outputs that you have to produce, and that are going to be a Word document and a PowerPoint presentation. Now, sometimes you will have just a Word document, but some units, the idea would be to allow you to develop softer skills, and these soft skills will be helping you to produce the output as a PowerPoint presentation with slides, speaker notes, reflective study, or a reflective account of what you've learned. And in some cases, there will be Word document produced, but like a question answer, question answer session, and they would be task based. And that is what is mentioned in the part of the handbook. Obviously, uh, plagiarism and similarity is looked at quite seriously. So anything over 20%, you will get a report back from us. And that will allow you to see where all the material has been copied. I'll go into details of that. And after page 17, we have extracted, you know, the unit specifications and they have been uploaded into the units, individual units on Moodle. So you might not want to go beyond page 17, but if you want to see the overview of the units, it's a good reading that you can do. And that would allow you to understand what all units you're going to study in the course. That is the course overview and the course handbook, which is the document listed here on Moodle. Any questions on this so far? No, please. Okay. Now, let me go to the third part, which is to look at showing you how you are going to get feedback and where would you submit assignments, how the assessments normally happen, and you know what is the assessment looking like, just to give you an idea. So here I am going to show you, say, for example, a particular assignment. And in that particular assignment, what I'm going to show you how we provide feedback. So let me just open one of them up. And what I will do is show them to you, which is relevant to your course that you're doing with us, health and social care. So I'm going to try and bring out either the communications unit or the health and social care sector unit. And there we go. So for this, what I'm going to do is basically show you the full screen uh, because I want to relate to what the assignment is, what the assignment brief is, and how you go about uh, submitting, where do you submit, things like that. So just give me one second. Let me just quickly organize this. And, uh, well then, okay, there we go. Okay, so you're going to see four documents on the screen, which I will share right now. One two, three, and four. All right, so this is, you'll have to bear with me. I'm gonna share my full screen. Here we go. Now, what you see is a, there are four documents which are open. Uh, number one, which is the assignment brief, which is coming from Moodle. So this is the assignment brief for this unit, which is health and social care sector. There is a bit of a context which is given. And, uh, the other bit that you have is there are organized into tasks. <laughs> and then there are, this is the assignment which is written by the lecturer, uh, sorry, by the student, as you can see. And this is the feedback sheet for the learner. So what happens when you get the, uh, you know, when you start doing the assignment? So the first thing that you do is you submit the assignment to a mailbox by on email, which is called learnerwork at ukversity.co.uk. So where do you submit assignments? Submit assignments to email box, which is this, learnerwork at ukversity.co.uk. Now, the reason when we ask you to submit assignments here is that because this is a monitored mailbox. So you will get the assignment, you will get an acknowledgement when you send an email that your assignment has been received. And this assignment is now going to be marked by the lecture and you will get back, get the feedback in five to seven working days. Now, once you email this here, what happens is the lecturer receives the assignment 
and the lecturer will do a bit of marking on the assignment, which is done by putting comments to the tasks that you are um, covering. So here, the first task, if you see in the assignment brief, it talks about analysis of organizational structure, including private and publicly funded provision. So the learner has made some evidence here. And as you can see, it has got some coverage and the assessor here has made feedback saying, you have achieved this particular task. So commenting is done on the right hand side, as you can see, and this allows you to understand that each of the tasks is being done and the learner is achieving this task. Now this document, when you get back on from, from the assessor on your email, you'll not be able to see this document commenting on the phone. You have to open it in your laptop or your PC or your Mac because this full view is only available on the uh, full PC or a uh, fuller screen. Now, okay. as you can see, this feedback that we have provided allows us to uh, you know, uh, provide a clear, um, let's say decision to you that you have passed this particular unit. And as you can see, the learner has put references um, you know, and then this uh, uh, unit has been comprehensively covered. So when you look at the assignment brief, you're just going to see there are tasks which are given. And then these tasks is what the learner has done uh, one by one by creating the output as a Word document. Now, once you have received, um, you know, this feedback, we will also confirm this to you in writing to say this is what you have done and this is what you have achieved. So as you can see, the comments have been put and this sheet you will get back from the assessor to say that you have passed this assignment. Now, in this case, if you see the task 3.3 of the assignment, if I take you here in task 3, 3.3, assessment of barriers to health and social care, this bit, the learner has, uh, the, uh, the tutor has said that the learner's work is slightly weak on this. You need to elaborate. And pending which, if you submit this by changing some part of the uh, text by elaborating it, you are going to be achieving the full unit. Yeah. So yeah. this gives you an, a good idea in terms of what has to be done. So if I go into 3.3 .3 now, which is looking at barriers, and that would allow you to um, go in and make some changes depending on the comments which have been put by the assessor. So here, if I go into go into the barriers part of it, so 4.1, and this is the one wherein we feel that task has not been done. So you have done the impact of values, and you have forgotten the barriers to the uh, you know which have to be covered. So if I put this here right now, this part is something which the learner has actually forgotten to do in the assignment. So what will happen is the comment on this sheet, as you can see here, clearly mentions that this is not something that you've covered. And what the assessor has done is then given you feedback to say, can you go ahead and complete this task by talking about barriers like attitude, disabilities, economic factors, and public perception. And when you cover this here, this will allow you to achieve the overall assignment. So if I just show this to you again, as you can see, just the word document. In this, the assessor has given this feedback, and that means that this bit has to be submitted by the learner to achieve this particular task. So when we look at this and you get this assignment back, what you do is in order to achieve this, what we normally suggest all learners to do is basically highlight any changes that they are making to the existing assignment by highlighting that in yellow. And what the learner in this case has done is, has provided this particular task to us and as a separate annexer, and that separate annexer now meets the criteria for the assignment. But what you do is, when you send this to us, which was barriers, you highlight this as yellow. And that mm -hmm. gives us a clear idea that yes, you have gone ahead, looked at the feedback that we have provided and based on the feedback, you made these changes. And now what we can see is that yes, this work is now meeting the criteria. This is fully now uh, completing the task three. So what the assessor would do here is put a comment. 
task 3.3 is now fully achieved as you have explained the barriers which are there to overcome the uh, overcome in the HSC sector. Now, this bit that you see, which has been done now, it helps achieve the full assignment. Now, the reason we ask you to highlight this yellow is because it allows us to clearly see what work has been added in the original document. And once this has been added, you will, you know, obviously save this document. And what you're going to do is obviously send this back to us again, uh, you know, for the purposes of assessment. And then what the um, uh, assessor would do is look at this and clearly say, yes, you have met the requirement now. And this assignment is now passed. You can move to the next unit. So this is what you need to keep in mind when we look at, um, you know, essentially um, giving you feedback on the assignments specifically related to, um, uh, you know, the um, units. And that is how this process goes back and forth with the learner in order to ensure that you are able to have full coverage and then get the required guidance essentially from the tutor. And that requirement in terms of guidance allows you to complete that unit. Is that okay? Yeah. So this part of the process would mean that this document will go back and forth between you and the tutor till you get this final summative sheet from uh, you know the uh, tutor. As you can see, this one here. And this is your record to say that you have completed the unit and you've achieved the unit. Is that okay? Yeah. So where will you submit your assignments? If I ask you this question, where do you submit your assignments? Um, you submit the assignments to this email, which is learner. Mm, learners, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Learners, like, and then the tutor gets back to you by giving you feedback. And when you get yeah. the feedback, you get a clear pass mm -hmm. and you know that you've finished this unit and then you move on to the next unit. All right. Is that okay? Okay. Good stuff. Then I'll, okay, then I'll okay. Now let's yeah. look at uh, the last part, which is to just to get you introduced, you know, to the key members in the team. Now on health and social care, we have three, four lecturers. You have Yasser. Uh, he's going to be teaching. Now, most of the lecturers teach the unit they are specialist in, right? We've got Shazia. And then we've got Rex. And yes, and you, I just sent away, and then you have myself. So I will be teaching one or two units, which I'm specialist in because I have a qualification level seven diploma in health and social care management, and I've taught this particular course for over nine years. Rex is, okay. uh, is a nurse. Obviously, he has got BSc in nursing, but he also teaches specialist units which are in this course. Shazia, she is a double master's. I am a double master's. Yasir is a double master's. And we teach units which are going to be, you know, specific to our, uh, you know, subject area. Now, along with that, you have administrators or people that you can get in touch. Now, if you need a tutorial, you can get in touch with Marvis by sending him an email. You can WhatsApp okay. him and he's the course uh, coordinator. So anything that you need and you do not have then they can be provided to you from the course coordinator. There are two administrators that you can reach if you need any help. One of them is IT admin. Okay. IT administrator is Victor. And he can be, you can send him an email at victor at ukversity.co.uk. If you have access, a problem in terms of it, reaching the material, you need a, say, for example, um, any book or anything which is missing and you are not able to access Moodle, if you have any problems with the platform, which is Moodle platform, then you okay. reach uh, Victor. But if you need, okay. say, for example, you need a lecture uh, recording, you need, for example, um, you know, uh, say, for example, your um, ebook, or you need something which is related to maybe tutorial with a tutor, you want to speak to a tutor. So, this would be arranged by Marvis, who is the course coordinator. And there is also other coordinators as well. Sometimes if 
you are not able to get in touch, we have uh, one email to which you can send, and this is accessed by, you know, uh, Jeel and also by Harjinder. And they are essentially, you know, course coordinators, which will primarily be looking at, you know, providing you, um, you know, feedback or essentially any problems that you have, you would be able to get in touch and they will either call you on the phone or maybe send you an email. Or if you have asked for additional material, they will then be able to provide that to you. Okay. 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 So that helps us cover, uh, you know, most of the, uh, let's say, uh, discussion that I want you to do to get you inducted into the course. Now, okay. one of the other things which I want to check with you is, what are the best days you are going to be looking at studying this course? Um, I think weekends, yeah, weekends. Saturday, okay. yeah, Saturday, Sunday, and yeah. So Saturday and Sunday uh, is fine. And do you so in Saturday? And is there any specific time that you're looking at? Um, we normally like, do lectures at nine, ten a.m. and okay. two p.m. All right. right, that's okay. So that's okay. Then will be the times because what we want to do is either get you early in the morning so that you are finished with your lecture and study, and then you are available. Then you have the yeah. rest of the day to yourself to do other things yeah, or we yeah. catch you towards the later half of the day so that will be 2 p.m or um, 3. sorry sundays are like friday saturday friday saturday thursday friday saturday okay friday. Thursday. Yeah. And thursday can you do evenings yeah thursday evenings um uh, no time 6 30 onwards 7 30 onwards no, I can't do evenings. I think mornings and afternoons will be okay. But mornings, evening. what time in the morning are we looking at? Morning like 9, 10, 11 to 2. 9, nine to 2, two, two or 3. 9 to 3, yeah. 9, nine to 10. Three. Okay. Mm. 9 to 3. So Sundays are out because Sunday you might be going to the church, isn't it? Yeah. All right, okay, so Sunday I'll remove. So what I'll do is I will pass this timing on to Marvis. Now he's going to speak to some of the lecturers. And then what we'll do is share with you a schedule so that the lectures can start from this coming week. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, thank you. Let's stop. Now we do all the lectures on Zoom, like we are doing a session today. So obviously, yes, please. one of the yeah. platforms, you don't need any subscription. And okay. what we'll do is you'll receive a code and that code would allow you to essentially join right. the uh, lecture with us pretty much by all clicking right. to the code itself. Okay. Is that okay? okay? Yeah. Good stuff. Any other questions that you have uh, that 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 you feel we haven't covered or you want to cover? Oh, it's okay. I think it's okay. For Good, now. Stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. So what I will do now is pass these timings to uh, Marvis okay. that we've discussed, and then he will come back to you with a schedule. So we will send you a schedule for a particular unit for the next four weeks. We'll cover one unit, then go to the second one, then go to the second okay. one, then next one, then next one. That's how we'll cover this, of course. Uh, okay. All right. okay. Is that okay? Yeah, no okay. worries. Yeah. Okay, that's brilliant. I will give you a, send you a copy of this recording of the session just in oh, a couple okay. of minutes as it is available, and then we'll okay. catch up with you in the subsequent days. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Thank you.